Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting Tropical Macaw and I'm going to be sipping on some peach tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, cobalt blue, green oxide, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, Mars black, deep yellow, and fluorescent pink. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like to, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk, a little small piece of white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing. Yours can be bigger if you wanted to. And then I'm going to be using uh, three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, I have a number 10 round synthetic brush, and I have a number one round synthetic brush. And I'll refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up too if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, You'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same type and size of canvas to the same type of brushes and paint and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to do for the first step is we're going to paint the base coat for our sky, our water, and our beach. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm using are blue, white, brown, and yellow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint my sky. It's going to come almost halfway down my canvas. Then I'm going to paint my water and I'm going to get it to blend right into a nice soft beach sand color. So before I start this process, I'm going to pre-mix myself a beach tan, a sand tan. <laughs> so I'm going to do that first and I'm going to be doing that with my medium brush. I'm going to paint with my large brush, but I'm going to mix my paint with my medium brush. So I've already pre-mixed myself a beach tan color. So it's right here. How I got to that was I used some white, a little bit of brown, and a touch of yellow. So the yellow is going to make my beach sand look a little bit more on the golden sand kind of color as opposed to it being too drab of a color, um, which sometimes when you use just brown and white, it might turn out a little bit too dull. So in my beach sand opinion, <laughs> but so my touch of yellow in there helps to make it into a little bit more of a golden type of a color that looks like it's got a little bit more sunshine in it. So that's where I'm headed for that color. So now that I've got that, I'm just going to put my mixing tool away. I'm going to pick back up my large bristle brush and I'm going to pick up a little bit of cobalt blue and white on my brush at the same time. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to give myself a couple of markers as to how far down I want my sky to come. So I'm going to visually kind of find my halfway point up or down my canvas and I'm going to go a little bit above that, just a touch. You could even just do it halfway down your canvas. Whatever works for you is totally fine. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So if this is about halfway, I'm a little above that. This just gives me a visual stopping point for my sky. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up more blue and I'm going to start at the top of my sky going left to right. I'm really at this point just looking for a beautiful blue sunshiny sky. It's going to be darker at the top and lighter at the bottom. So as I go through this process right now I'm picking up blue and a little bit of white and then after I start the sky up here with it being pretty darn dark I'm just going to pick up white on my brush 
um, to get it to go lighter and lighter as it goes down towards that horizon. So this was blue and white on my brush, and now I'm gonna start picking up just white on my dirty brush. And because I didn't wash my brush, what's gonna happen is the, um, the blue will work its way off of my brush, or at least enough off of my brush so the sky gets lighter and lighter as it comes down towards that horizon line. So again, I'm just picking up white with my dirty brush and you can see it still looks light blue. So that's what's happening is that blue is um, working its way off of my brush and then I just kind of go and connect these guys in through here and then I just kind of keep going back and forth, left to right, to fill in this entire space. And then once I've got, I've got, a, I've got a shedding brush today. It's a brand new one. I apparently I didn't wash it enough before I started the process. So um, once I've got this step done, then I'm going to move right onto the water without even washing my brush. So I'm just kind of getting these colors to intermingle well together. And if yours is lighter or darker than mine, or has more blue or less of a gradient, that's okay. It all works out in the long run. We've got lots of details that we're gonna be putting on top of this, so your sky can completely be different than mine. It'll be totally up to you. So now that I've got that done, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up, on my dirty brush, I'm gonna pick up blue and a little bit of brown paint. So blue and brown. What this is gonna do is this is gonna make my water a little bit different color than my sky. So to give it more of a kind of a tropical-y type of a look. So once I've got these two colors on my brush, I'm just gonna go right across here. I don't need this horizon line to be perfect because we're gonna have a little bit of an island. You're gonna have a big bird. You're gonna have some flowers. You're gonna have all kinds of stuff to distract the viewer from understanding if this line is totally straight or not. And then I just kind of connect my um, left side to my right side, making sure that all of my um, my line is within that sky. So there's no gap between the water and the sky. And then I'm just gonna go back and forth, kind of release some of this paint off of my brush. And then once I've got that um, blended in there, now I'm just gonna pick up white paint and I'm gonna bring this water down even further. And if yours is not dark enough, if you want it to be a little bit darker, like I feel like I want that to be just a little bit darker at the top, I'm picking back up a little bit of my blue and my brown just to make sure that I've got a little bit more darkness up at the top in through there so it didn't blend too fast for me or go too light too quickly. And then I'm gonna just kind of pick up my white as I come down. So. I'm going to bring this really light in through here and then I'm gonna intermingle it with my beach sand in a minute. So right now just picking up some white so I can release some of those colors off of my brush into the water. And then once I've got, I would say about this far, I'm making it a little bit come down a little bit further on the right hand side. Once I've got it down this far, I'm gonna start picking up a little bit of my white plus my sand color. So let me just get this painted in here. I'm digging this color of the water. It's gonna look really pretty with all of the details on top of it. So I've got this in through here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up white plus my sand color. So white plus tan on my brush at the same time. And this is gonna get my my beach sand to start to appear. So I'm gonna overlap it right into my water. So those two aspects look like they're blended into each other or they're intermingling with one another and they'll like they're moving with each other, which is always a great thing that happens on the shoreline of a beach. And then I'm just gonna start picking up more of my beach sand color. So that way it gets a little bit darker as I go down towards the bottom of the canvas. And then I'm just gonna finish up this area with this beach sand. And then we are going to be using our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this whole area colored in here, and if you had to go back into the other colors, you could certainly do that, but this is feeling pretty good to me. So I am going to wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some clouds and some waves. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. I'm mostly gonna be using white, but if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So I do suggest that before you start this step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take an extra long break if you'd like to. 
Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So I'm really not gonna be putting a ton of detail in my clouds or my waves. I just wanna add that background kind of atmospheric details to the painting so it looks like we've got all the necessary information. You don't even need to put clouds. I just felt that they'd be a good addition to my painting. So I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. I'm using a very small amount of white paint on my brush. I want these to just look light and airy and fluffy. So I'm going to be using a kind of a circular scrubbing type of technique to get them on here. So I'm just gonna kind of move my brush up in a little bit of a circular manner and get the edges or the bottom section of the clouds to just dissipate or uh, almost like fade out into the sky next to them. So you don't have to make yours exactly as mine. I'm just gonna go for some nice, you know, fluffy drifting clouds. But the key here is to just not have it really circular and like a, a cotton ball. You want, you can just kind of spread out that white paint so it looks like you can see some of the background behind it and that's going to make your clouds look a little bit more fluffy and airy and then if you make them a little bit smaller down towards the horizon that'll make them look like they're going off into the distance so those are just little kind of tricks and you don't even need to just use white you could use um, you could use a little bit of tan or gray in them if you want them to have a little bit more dimension to them but I'm just going for a nice fluffiness in my clouds so I'm just using white today so now that I've got that done I'm going to create my um, my waves in my in my water and I'm going to be using just white again so I'm putting just a teeny tiny bit of white paint on my brush and what I'm going to do is have my waves kind of coming in this way and I don't want really energetic waves I just want the water to almost kind of be rippling into the shoreline so I've got a little bit of white paint on my brush and what I like to do is I'm going to be pushing my brush into the edge of the ripple that's coming towards the viewer and I'm going to utilize the light spots that I see already. So if I have like a light spot here with a dark spot right next to it, that would make a great edge for a wave. If I've got a light spot in through here next to a dark spot, another great place to put a little bit of a wave. So what I do is I'm going to take my brush, I'll find, this is a nice spot in through here, I'll take my brush and I kind of push it towards the edge of that, of that wave. So that gives a kind of a firm edge on the bottom and a soft edge as it's going into the water. And then I'll just kind of do the same thing for all these other little light areas or the light areas that I want to turn into waves or ripples and I'll bring some over in through here. I know I'm gonna have my bird and lots of flowers so I don't need to bring it into a real firm place. So this is a good one in through here. Just get my hand out of the way so you can see what I'm doing in through here. And then you can do as many as you want or as few as you want. I'm gonna just kind of maybe put a couple more over in through here. And you could also take a little bit of a darker color and put it underneath that light edge and that'll give you what will appear to be a um, like a little wet shadow underneath the edge of that wave. But again, I'm not looking to do a ton of detail on mine. I just want this to kind of be like almost background noise on my, on my painting. So it just looks, gives that gentle appearance of some little ripply waves coming into the shore to, um, to just wet the sand. <laughs> and then that's gonna do it for that step. I'm gonna use my uh, medium brush for the next step, and my medium and my small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your large brush away, take out both your medium and your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint an island. I'm gonna be using my medium and my small brush. I'm gonna start with my medium brush though. Um, and I'm gonna be using black, blue, green, yellow, tan, and white. So I'm not using brown or my pink, all my other colors I'll use. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself a long, narrow island way off in the distance so it's gonna look really small. We'll put on the, the the shape of the island, then we'll 
color it with a whole bunch of details. We'll have a little sandy edge to it and we'll put a couple of palm trees on there as well. So I'm going to start with a bit of black on my brush and a little bit of water. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw myself a line right at the horizon. I've got mine coming about halfway into my canvas. So somewhere about here is where I'm starting mine. And I'm going to bring this line all the way to the edge, but you can overlap your horizon line wherever you want to because that's going to give the bottom edge of your um, of your island a little bit of shape. So now that I've got that in, in there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up blue and green paint on my dirty brush. So I have blue and green paint on my dirty brush, and I'm going to give myself a little bit of a profile for my um, for my island. So I'm going to start it pretty narrow in through here. I'm going to just kind of get this color on over in through here. I'm not really concerned about a beautiful um, profile yet. What I'm really just looking to do is give myself some unevenness to the top edge of it. And if you can still detect a firm black line underneath there, that's fine. This is just kind of st setting the stage as to how we're going to um, create the island in a minute. So just getting this on in through here. You can have yours taller or shorter than mine. Whatever works for you is totally fine by me. And I'm just kind of tapping this on here so it doesn't take too, too long to dry. We're going to put another layer on it in a second. This is just setting the stage for us. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush. And I'm picking up a tiny bit of my beach sand color, so that little bit of a tan color. And I'm going to give myself the evidence of a little bit of a beach <laughs> at the bottom's edge of my um, island. So I am i don't want this to be a firm line. I'm just kind of wiggling my brush left to right, back and forth. So you can just wiggle it a little bit. As <laughs> As you're going through this process so that'll give you um, what appears to be a nice natural edge to your to your land maybe some areas are a little bit brighter than others maybe some are a little bit darker I just kind of keep picking up a little bit of that tan and giving myself this itty bitty bit of a shoreline in through here and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick up without washing my brush, I'll pick up a tiny bit of white paint on the tip of my brush and go just skip it along the edge of that um, of that tan. And this is going to make it look like there's a little bit of white caps from the water just kind of crashing into the edge of your island. And again, you don't have to do it all the way. You don't have to do it a lot, just something that's going to give that illusion of water kind of crashing into it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch brushes to my small brush. So I'm going to take my small brush and I'm going to give myself some palm trees. And <laughs> so I'm picking up some black paint on my small brush. And I want these palm trees to look really small and just way off in the distance. So I'm going to just give myself some trunks. They can be um, in different heights or in different, oops, that was a lot of paint on my brush. Hold on. Get some of that off of there. Um, I, you can have them in clusters. You can have, you know, short ones and tall ones, just however many you want to have is totally fine. Just imagine this to be really far off in the distance so you don't need much detail on it whatsoever. Once I've got my tree trunks in there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a little bit of green with my black and I'm going to put the, um, the palm fronds on. And I'm just using green and black to start. I will, I will put a little bit of highlight on them in a minute. And I'm just kind of making these out like little spiders. Um, I don't need much detail on them because they're so far off in the distance. I'm really just looking to give the illusion of like a little bit of a silhouette for them. I can put as many as I want. Again, just green and black is where I'm starting with this color. Um, for my palm fronds and because they're so close some of them are so close to each other They're going to overlap one another which is going to make them look even more natural. So we've just got those little those little pops of um, 
foliage at the top of the on the top of the um, trunk. So now that I've got that, I'm going to wash and dry my brush again. We're going to let those trees settle for a minute, and I'm going to put some texture on my hill. So my texture is going to come from green, yellow, white, and that's probably all. I'm going to just use my small brush and I'm going to pick up a little bit of green, yellow, and white. And really what I'm looking to do is just kind of give the evidence of uh, some life on the top of this of this hill. You can make it as bright as you want. You can make it as dull as you want. I'm just looking to add these little pops of brightness so it looks as if we've got, you know, maybe some bushes or maybe some grass or, you know, maybe some rocks. You could put some um, some more brown if you wanted to. I didn't even use brown, uh, additional brown in this section, but if you wanted to, you certainly could. If you want it to go darker as it goes down towards that right-hand side, you could certainly use a little bit more black on your brush. I'm just dotting in colors here to give it the illusion that there is a little bit more um, information, maybe it's getting lit up a little bit by whatever the light source is, and then if you had any additional stuff you wanted to do on those, on that, you certainly could. It's looking pretty good to me. And now I'm just going to add a little bit of highlight on my palm fronds. So this again is going to be yellow, green, and white, and I'm just going to kind of streak in little bits of highlights on some of these treetops. I don't want to take away all the color that I already did. This again is just going to add some um, some little sunshine at the top of these palm fronds. I like to do the dark first, so that way when I'm adding these bits of um, highlights, you'll get these little pops of darkness in between them, and that makes it look a little bit more natural. So green, yellow, and white is the colors that I keep alternating for the highlights on these palm the tops of the palm trees. And that's all I'm gonna do. I would, at this point, just let it dry. I would step back from it, see if there's any additional little marks or pieces of foliage that I wanna put on anywhere or grass or anything like that, and I would make any adjustments. And then we're gonna be using our piece of chalk for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your small brush away, take out your piece of chalk, actually, what are we going to do for the next step? Yeah, chalk will work. Take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to draw an outline for our bird and our branch. I'm going to be using my piece of chalk. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that you'd like, uh, but that's what I'm going to use for my drawing utensil. I'm going to guide you through a series of markers, and by the time we're done, we'll have just a nice simple outline for our branch and our bird that we'll be able to use during the coloring in process in painting. So I'm going to start with my branch so I have somewhere for my bird to sit. I'm going to have, my, my bird's going to be pretty darn big, so I want to have a substantial branch for this bird to sit on so it doesn't fall or break on the bird. So I'm going to come up on uh, my left hand side of my um, down left hand side of the canvas from the bottom. I'm going to come up about two inches and then I'm going to go up almost another inch above that. This is going to be, oh, I think I need a pencil so you guys can see during through this light area. So this is going to be the top of the branch. This will be the bottom of the branch. I'm going to bring this out pretty far and it's going to kind of curve up and go out. I'm going to have it kind of split. So if you go from the center of your canvas where you have your island and go to the left about an inch from that, I'm going to just put a little bit of a, oh, we need some pencil in this area too. That's the joys of having light and dark canvas <laughs> pieces on your canvas for you guys to see. So that'll be the little tip of the branch. And then I'm going to have another little tip somewhere out in this vicinity. So somewhere in through here. Yours does, your branch does not have to be exactly the same as mine. This is just something that will have a nice, um, firmness to it. And when I go to connect all these markers, I'm going to give it like a little bit of a wiggle so that way um, it will ha look nice and organic. So I'm going to take this edge over here and just going to connect it down in through here, something like that, and then do the same thing with this one over here. Then I'll take this little guy in through here and connect it with 
you know, whatever kind of wave or wiggle that you want, something like that. And then maybe we'll have a couple little branches kind of sticking out here and there. Maybe that one's a little bit too long. We'll just bring that one back. Uh, maybe I'll have a little one kind of coming out over here. These are just little pieces of the branch that we can, we'll have to, um, we'll be able to color in later. And that's looking pretty good for my branch. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an outline for my bird. So when I teach how to draw birds, I like to draw them with two basic shapes, a circle for the head and an egg for the body, and then we build off of that. So I'm going to start with the egg shape. So this will be for the body. I'm going to have my body in through here. I'm going to come to the left from um, my branch if I split the difference between these two, I'm right about here. I'm going to go up about two inches. This is going to be the top of my um, of my egg shape, and then I'm going to have the bottom of my egg shape right about where my branch um, ends, right in through here. I'm going to have it pretty darn wide, so it's going to come out maybe about three or four inches. And if yours does not turn out the same exact shape as mine, the egg portion, when we're done, um, after we put the egg on, we will shape the outside of the bird to make it look nice and realistic. So I'm going to come directly below here and just give myself a little bit of a marker where I want the end of my egg to go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I might have to use a combination of my, um, my chalk and my, my pencil so you guys can see, so something like that. And then I'll do the same thing over on this side, so something like that. So that's going to give me my egg shape to start. Then I'm going to do a circle for the head. So I'm going to come, my circle is going to be a little bit to the right of the center of my egg. So I'm going to come to the right just a little bit and go up, I would say maybe about three and a half inches somewhere in through here and give myself a circle that's about, I, I think I want to cross over this area in through here just a little bit. So something like this. And again, your, your circle doesn't have to be exactly as mine. Mine is probably about two, two and a half inches wide. It doesn't come out any further than my right chest in through here. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build off of this. I wanna have a tail. So I'm gonna take from right about here and bring this tail down to the bottom of my canvas. This left-hand side is almost vertical, fully vertical, with a little bit of kind of a, a wave going down. So I'm just going to kind of travel down from this left-hand side of the body and just give myself a little bit of a ripple. Show you here so you can see how I've done that with my pencil. And then obviously you won't be able to see my chalk on this side either. So over here, I'm just going to come in through here and bring this down in this direction. So it's kind of a little bit to the left because I've got my bird looking over in that direction. Now I'm going to kind of bulk out my shoulders. So I want these shoulders to really be kind of broad on this bird. So I'm going to just make sure that this one's pretty almost square-ish and I, uh, they, I almost have them kind of up a little bit too. So I'm going to just bring this corner of this egg up just a little bit. So it's almost like a little bit of a heart type of a shape at the top. And that's going to bring those wings, the top of the wing shoulders up. I want to connect the back of the head to the to the body. So I'm just going to make sure that this is fully connected in through here. So I just give myself a little bit of a diagonal line to, or curve to connect that. I'm going to use my pencil for the rest so you can, so I don't have to worry about you seeing it or not. Now I just really need to put a kind of a forehead. These birds have kind of a square type of forehead. So I'm going to bring the top of this um, head out just a little bit and bring it down. So it's, a, it's almost more of a squarish, a roundish square at that top right hand corner. And I'm going to give myself a beak. We're only going to see part of the beak in this um, sketch because the other part is within the circle. So if this doesn't, when, you, when I show you how to do this beak, if it doesn't look big enough, don't worry. It will get bigger when we go to do the rest of the face. So I'm going to come up from this little corner, give myself a little bit of a curved line like that. I'm going to bring this little beak down in through here and then I'm going to curve this up and connect it up in this region up in through here like that that should be good and then if you need to erase <laughs> erase it and then that is all oh I need to do a little piece of the um the wing feather also so 
I've got um, these wings on the back are going to come down in through here and one of them is going to kind of cross over the um, tail so I'm going to give myself a little a little kind of bump out piece for um, that that wing tip to be over in through here and that's all I'm going to do for my outline we're going to use our medium brush for the next step so you can put your pencil or your chalk away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint our branch and our base coat for our bird. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are tan, black, brown, white, and cobalt blue. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a base coat on my branch with my tan color. And as I go through this process, again, I'm going to be thinking branch, bumpy, I can kind of maneuver my brush as I'm going through these edges. So if I want it to have a little bit more texture, I certainly can. If I want it to have a little bit more wiggle to it, I certainly can. And I can also leave some of my chalk mark visible. So if I'm going through something and I'm like, oh, I don't want that branch to go totally out to that spot, then I leave some of that chalk and I can come back and erase that chalk after or that pencil after the paint has dried so you can manipulate your um your structure as you go through this process if you want it to be thinner or you know have more wave to it or more bumps to it you can certainly um, make it into whatever you'd like to be or you could add a branch here or there if you want that to happen when i get to the bird Part, I'm gonna just bump right into it like that and then I skip over it and come over to this other side. My branch is wider at this edge where it kind of goes off my canvas so that way it looks like it's nearing the base of that tree. So for me branches always seem to get thinner as they go farther away from the base of the tree so that's what this is intended to give the illusion of. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to paint the base coat for my bird with cobalt blue. I'm not doing anything special with this just even the beak is going to be the um, the cobalt blue color. I'm just using the tip of my brush to go slowly through these edges. But if you wanted to um, utilize a smaller brush while you're going while you're just doing um, going around the outline, you could certainly do that. The we are going to be doing a lot of other stuff on top of this. So if there is a port part where you you know went outside the lines or it doesn't it didn't color in perfectly or a spot where you can see your pencil or your chalk underneath that paint don't worry about it this is just the base coat cobalt blue has a tendency to be streaky and you can see through it on this first layer like you'll be able to see my horizon line underneath my um my paint which is totally fine because we're going to be painting over it. This is just giving us a nice beautiful blue base for the um, for the feathers and for all the other information that we're going to be adding to the bird. As I come down these sides of the bird where I know that I'm going to have lots of feathers and want to have some good kind of textural elements, as I come down these sides you don't have to just follow your outline. You can certainly bring a couple of these pieces out. You can even just kind of maneuver your brush in this downward motion and you can disconnect it a little bit from your outline if you want to. Again, that's going to make it look a little bit more natural when you have those, you know, singular pieces uh, when you're doing hair or feathers or anything like that where they can have individual pieces. You can certainly um, start that process even on a base coat by just pulling out these little individual um, marks and starting that starting that process. And then I'm just going to kind of bring this down, making sure I cross over my branch so I have full coverage in front of that so it looks like the bird sit, is sitting on top of it and doesn't make the branch look like it's broken underneath. And then I'm just bringing this all the way down in through here. And I'm not going to forget my little piece of my wing right into here. So I'm just going to bring some of this blue out here with a nice 
um, uneven kind of edge to it so it just looks like the tips of a little bit of a of a wing and then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush that's looking pretty good to me I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna finish up this branch with just a couple of quick little highlights and shadows so I just want to add a little bit of texture and darkness down on the bottom side and some lightness up at the top so I'm gonna to put a touch of black and brown on my brush and I'm just gonna scoot it at the bottom side of my branch and then just tap it going up that side of the branch and that's what's going to happen is it'll just give me a nice shadow at the bottom and it'll transition into a little bit lighter at the top and then i'm going to do the same thing over on this little guy just a little bit of black and brown tapping it in where i feel the bottom side of that branch would be going to do the same thing over in through here so again just a little bit of black and brown on my brush and once i kind of get that that shadowy area on there I can just tap it in with the tip of my brush and you could certainly use a smaller brush if this goes awry on you and you've just got too much of the um, of the darkness you can always bring back some of the uh, some of the tan color to manipulate the that and put more lightness into it but I'm not doing much I'm really just kind of putting these little pockets of darkness in through it on this one I feel like maybe I'd have a little bit of this shadowy stuff on the left hand side and the beautiful part about branches is they have so much texture to them you don't need to make them smooth now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white paint to give myself a, a bit of a, of a highlight over on the edges where I feel that I would want it so a little bit of white in through there and I'm just kind of reversing the thought I'm doing the lightness on the edges and then just tapping it down into that tan I think I'm gonna pick up some of my tan as well right now just to get this white to um, blend in so I don't have just a stark um, white to tan so this way that that just gives me a little bit better of a transition and then again I'm just kind of tapping it like I want some some bits of bark or whatever um, this texture is on this particular branch maybe a little bit up in through here and then you just play with it until you feel like you've got enough contrast enough texture and then when you feel like you're all done we're going to be using our small brush for the next step and again you can erase any of your little pencil marks or chalk marks I'll do that with a little bit of water before I return and then put the medium brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what I'm going to do for the next step is I'm going to be doing the base coat for all of my facial features which will include a big huge yellow spot on the side of the head I don't know if that's a facial feature or not, but it's gonna be in my, <laughs> it'll be on my painting, what I'll call it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm using my small brush. I'm gonna be using black, tan, um, maybe some pink and some white. And if I ha have any other colors, I'll, I'll let you know. So I'm gonna first uh, paint the base coat for my beak. So I'm using black with a little bit of water on my brush just so I can have a nice fluidity to it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of section off where I want my beak to go. So it is going to start right up in through here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down in kind of a curvy way into the head a little bit like this and then bring it back down towards like that um, neck area in through here and then I'm going to color in this whole area with black paint so nothing fancy black covers really well so you can um, paint in any in any brush stroke that you'd like but you just want to slow down maybe when you're going along those edges if you want to stay inside your lines just slow down a little bit and the, the water or liquid medium or something on your brush to keep the paint fluid will allow you to get cleaner lines or smaller lines. So as you're going to these little tips and you want to get that paint to really sink into the crevices of the canvas and give you those clean edges, putting a little bit of fluid medium on your brush will completely help. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another kind of black line a little bit away from here so some of these birds have almost like a piece of skin of sorts that sits behind their beak so I'm gonna put a shadowy or a darker area behind that that little 
pink piece that we'll put on in a minute. So I'm gonna just go a little bit away from what I just did. I come up here a little bit and I'm gonna give myself a curvy kind of line, something like this that kind of travels down in through here. And then I'm gonna come back in this direction and bring it down back towards that little area into here. So I just kind of separated out that section and then I'm gonna um, bring this black out just a little bit further in through here. This is part of um, like the neck area and then just kind of fade it up a little bit into that blue. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit more of my black paint and water on my brush and I'm gonna kind of outline where I want um, the eye area to go. So this is just gonna be kind of outlining, we'll call it the cheek area. So I've got a little bit of the black on my brush and I'm just kind of bringing this down in this direction. I'm gonna have it kind of um, in an arcing type of way like this. And then I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel and just get this to fade into that blue a little bit. So that way I don't have too, um, too much of an outliney type area, it just kind of sections that off. Now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna put um, tan on my brush. So this is gonna be my sand tan and this is gonna be the base coat for where I'm gonna put my eye and all the little details around my eye. So I'm gonna come from um, in through here and then just go up a little bit, maybe a little bit higher than that black mark in through there and then just color in this whole section in through here. When it meets the black, area. I'm going to give it a little bit of a soft edge so I'm just going to kind of pull it over that a little bit and that's going to give it um, almost like these little feathery type of appearance as it's coming over there. And then when it gets to this back area this is also going to be the base color that I use for my big yellow area that's going to happen in a little bit. So I just have that tan on my brush and I'm going to bring this out in this kind of arcing type of section back in through here. And again, this tan, what's gonna do it, what it's gonna do, it's gonna allow me to have a real vibrant color on top of it because it's kind of cutting that blue out of it and it's providing a nice light base. And then when I meet this black or this darker area, again, just kind of giving it a, a light um, textural type of edge to it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry, actually I'm not gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna make myself a light pink color, skin color for that. So I'm gonna actually use my tan plus a tiny bit of pink, and this is gonna give me a nice skin color that we'll use for that area behind the, um, behind the beak. So again, this is just pink mixed with my tan, and then once I've got that on, I'm just going to take it and I'm going to paint in this little section in through here. This is also going to be where our little nose is going to go in a bit, but we're just getting that base color on here. So when we go to build the details on it, we've got um, a wonderful place to start. And then we're going to use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our face, facial details. I'm gonna use my small brush. The colors I'm gonna use are black, white, yellow, and any other colors I need, but that might be it. So what I'm gonna first do is I'm going to be putting a couple of black details on, which is gonna be the eye, and they almost have like a little, um, I'm gonna call it like a zebra striping, in the eye section. We'll put a nostril on, we'll put the mouth on, and we'll put some highlights and shadows. We'll put the yellow feathers on this little area and then we'll be done. So I'm gonna start with a teeny bit of black paint with water on my brush. I'm gonna put my eye in place, which is just gonna be a tiny little oval somewhere in this vicinity. So a little oval with a little dot in the middle, something like that. And then once I've got that on there, I can kind of build these little zebra stripings. So I'm gonna just take it from maybe the middle of the, um, the beak in through here and then give myself a little um, striping like that and then just kind of in a fun way just build these really cool black stripes around the eye. You can have them really 
um, distinct, you can have them really thin, whatever is visually appealing to you. I saw them in a bunch of different patterns. So feel free to, to make it into whatever type of um, pattern that you would like. And then while that's kind of dry, maybe we'll put a little bit back in through here. Maybe I'll put a little bit more in through here. That, that looks pretty good right now. Um, so once you've got that done, while that's drying, I'm gonna put a little nostril on. So somewhere up in this vicinity, I'm just gonna put a little black mark in through there. I'm also gonna pull um, kind of a dark spot out where I want my beak to emerge. So I'm just gonna pull a little bit of black in through there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look around and see if I need the black anywhere else like I feel like I want this area in through here to be a little more blended out so I just have that that black on my brush maybe just a little bit of outlining or blending around the exterior of these sections you might find that yours is great the way that it is but if you feel that you want this to um, Kind of speak to the areas a little bit more or have a little bit more dimension you can certainly just rub that black around those edges and then i'm going to um, put black plus a little bit of white on my brush i'm going to put a highlight on my beak so i need a highlight on the edge of my beak in through here so this is black and white and i want my brightest area to be over here on the right but i want it to kind of blend in with the beak itself. So I'm using the black and white at the same time to give myself almost like a, a gray type of look to it. Um, and then I can bring in a little bit more white like I just did to enhance that edge a bit and then just get it to blend out. I know I want a little bit of maybe some texture or wrinkly um, kind of appearance as that beak is coming down towards the mouth. My mouth is gonna be right in here. So I'm gonna use that black and white on my brush and give myself little the little bit of a mouth that's gonna kind of connect in with that area. I think actually I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my peach as well, or my pink, so I can get this kind of skin to almost merge into that mouth a little bit. And the trick is to just get all these pieces to kind of talk to one another. You don't have to do a lot of work in order to make it look realistic. I just washed my brush to blend out this highlight just a little bit on this nose so it's, or this beak, so it's not too, um, too textured. And then I'm just gonna kind of bring it wherever I feel it's needed. I feel like I wanna put a little bit of lightness over in this skin, so I'm just taking a little bit of that lightness that I had on my brush and just bringing it down, maybe giving it a little bit of a, um, of a wrinkly kind of look on this skin area. And then if I feel I wanna do any more to it, like I feel like the mouth is a little bit shaped awkwardly, so I'm gonna bring a little bit of this beak thicker in through here. Yeah, that looks that looks a little bit better to me. Just make sure that it feels right to you. And then once I've got that done, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna add um, some yellow and white to this area back here. So I just put yellow on my brush and I'm gonna put yellow on top of this tan color in through here. Now I'm picking up white and I'm gonna add some brightness to this area in through here. So it looks like it's almost 3D and has some great texture to it, just bringing it down in a little bit of a um, feathery brush stroke, so to speak. I'm gonna get this to go up into the head as well. So I didn't even wash my brush. I'm just pulling a little bit of that white up into the face. Now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna put some white on that eye part. So white paint is going on my brush right now and I'm just gonna bring some lightness into the top part of this eye or the eye area, give it some structure and some dimension by just pulling in some brighter pieces where I feel that they would be warranted, especially up at the top. And this would be a great time if you felt like any of your lines needed to be um, made a little bit more narrow, you could certainly have fun doing that. And then I would just kind of fiddle with it, see if there's any more tweaking I want to do. And then, um, like, I feel like I want a little bit more of this skin color to come back in through here. And maybe a little bit more, I'm picking up tan and white and just bringing down this area a little bit further down into here just to make that facial 
um, structure a little bit larger and then just keep fiddling with it as much as you want. We're going to be using our medium brush for the next step so you can put this small brush away. Take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. Alright, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the feathers on our bird. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors I'm going to use are black, blue, green, and white. And if I use any other colors, I certainly will let you know. So what I'm in essence going to do is I'm going to be adding some strategic shadows on the back side of the bird, which is going to kind of separate the, uh, the, the wings down the center of the back It'll give you a little bit of separation uh, as far as these long um, side feathers from the bottom of the wings are, and then some shadow on the back side of the tail. We'll put a little bit of shadow on the back side of this neck, and then we're going to add some highlights or the light part for the feathers to make them look like they have some textural element to them and a little bit of highlight on the top of the bird. So I'm gonna start with my shadowy areas first. So I'm gonna put a little bit of black and blue on my brush at the same time. I'm going to decide what I want to happen on this back side. So if my bird is turned a little bit that way, I don't wanna put the center of my back right in through here. I'm gonna have it a little bit to the left. So I'm just using a little bit of black and blue on my brush to give me kind of an, a, an outline of sorts where I want that to happen. I also know that these birds kind of have layers of feathers coming down. So they have like a, a, a shorter feathers on the top part and then longer feathers on the bottom part. So I'm just going to use this um, black and blue to give me this separating type of area that's going to give me a visual kind of um, information as I'm going through this process. And I can also do a little short ones kind of coming up these sides in through here. So that just gives you that textural element. Down in through here, I know that I want this wing to kind of cross over and I'm assuming that the one from here is just kind of laying in with that back tail feather. So I'm gonna just use this little bit of blue and black. I'm picking up a bit more blue right now so I don't overdo the black right now. And I'm just giving myself, again, some darkness down in through here. This is where this long one is gonna lay over. So I just wanna make sure that I have that identified in my head. I think I'm gonna pull this side out just a little bit further in through here. So I just picked up a little bit more blue on my brush. And even if you still have some black on your brush too, that's totally fine. I just wanted that to be a little bit thicker in through there. That looks good. And then I'm going to, again, put a little bit of blue and black on my brush to get this tail feather to be pretty dark as it's receding down towards the bottom of my canvas. And I'm using both of these colors on my brush at the same time so I can have almost a striping type of effect, which is going to give the illusion of the feather um, texture. So that way I'm not, I'm not overdoing the... Um, the black too. And actually I'm bring, I just want this this piece to make sense with this in through here. So I'm going to clip off this little corner in through there. There we go. Now that works for me. There was something happening in through there that I didn't like, but I just figured it out. So now that I've got done done that, I'm going to use this little bit of black and blue on my brush to put a tiny bit of a shadow on the back side of the neck in through here. Not a lot, just a teeny tiny bit. And if you have a lot of paint on your brush, just give it a good squeeze or wipe it off on your paper towel. And that'll allow you to have a small quantity of paint on your brush so you can just kind of rub that up. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna create another color for my feathers. I want it to be more of a bluish green type of a color instead of just blue. So I've already done it so you can see where I'm headed. What I did was I took my cobalt blue and I mixed it with green oxide, which gives me a nice bluish green color. And then I need a little more blue in there. And then what I did was I added a teeny tiny bit of white paint into it, just a itty bitty bit. So that way it'll give it a little bit of lightness and it'll help with the opacity of it. So that's gonna be my secondary color for my feathers. So as I'm building these feathers, I'm gonna be using this color and I might use some of my cobalt blue too to get it to blend in. So I'm gonna work from the bottom up. I've got my, um, my custom green color or greenish blue on my brush and I'm just giving these faint little um, stripes within the 
within the feathers so they have this dimensional element to them. I'm going to bring this out in through here. I'm going to pick up some of my cobalt blue too right now to get both of um, those colors to work together on the edge in through here and then I'm going to work my way up the um, up the bird. I definitely want this wing to look like it is in front so if I have to in a minute when I do my highlights I'll make sure that I ident identify that pretty well and again I'm just picking up my custom blue or bluish green right now to give myself some more dimension and texture on these uh, feathers as I'm going up the bird and I'm going kind of in those layers that I've already established and I'm bringing my brush in a direction that I feel those wings or feathers would be falling. These ones on top of the shoulder, these are I'm going to have these nice and long and just kind of pulling them down in a longer kind of way on this back side. And I'm just really going for a nice color pattern that I feel was reminiscent to these the birds as I was as I was looking at the details of them and there's so many different types of these kind of birds. Um, some come really colorful with lots of different colors on them, but this one I thought was pretty color. Um, I liked the colors to coordinate with the painting, so that's what I went for on here. On the head, I'm just going to give a little dotting type of a texture to um, uh, make it appear as if those are shorter, little um, softer feathers on the head, and I'll put a little bit of a green hue to it in a minute. So just a little bit of a layer on here to get the um, the color incorporated that I'd like. Now I'm just going to add some bits of highlights. So my highlights are going to be with this custom greenish blue. I can also use some of my cobalt blue and white. So I want this right hand side to be the brightest and the top of the head to be the brightest. So that's where I'm going to concentrate my highlights on. So I picked up my custom green plus a little bit of white. I want some highlight over here on this shoulder and through here and I'm just kind of pulling it down so I can have that that brightness to it. I want some on this shoulder over in through here so I've got my custom green plus a little bit of white on my brush and I again I want that brightest highlight to be up at the top and I'm moving this in the direction that I feel that those feathers are laying so as I come in through this area I know that they're shorter kind of feathers so I can just give the, that little pop of the tip of them maybe down in through here just kind of bringing my brush in a short, shorter brush stroke. As I come down in through here, this will get a longer brush stroke. And as I'm moving my way towards the back, I don't need it as bright. So I don't necessarily need as much white on my brush, but you still incorporating little bits of those highlights without going all the way white is gonna make it look nice and realistic. Even on this back side, I still want some lighter notes to it, but if um, I don't want it to go all the way as light as maybe this side of the of the bird and then I just kind of keep fiddling with the um, tonal values of those if I want it to be brighter or if I need it to go in front a little bit more I just make sure that I incorporate a little bit more of those tips of those feathers I can just pop on a little bit more brightness as it's coming down the um, this bright side over here up on the top of the head, I'm going to use white and green on the top of the head. I saw, I found that some of these birds really had a, a kind of a vibrant green spot on the top of their head. So green, oxide, and white is where I'm going for the top of my head. And again, just kind of tapping it in so we can put it on top of that cobalt blue. The cobalt blue provides such a beautiful base. It's going to provide that textural element and I want the top to be really light. So I'm just going to add this green and white and now I'm picking up a touch of white to give it a super bright highlight right on the tippy top of that head. And then once I've got these on here again, I would let it dry, see if there's any additional little things that I want to do. Maybe I want to lighten up the back of this head a little bit with a touch more of a, a lighter tone. So making sure that tippy top of the head is nice and light will help to make, bring the story of the sunshine for the day. So if you have to just kind of keep elevating the top of that head, that'll also give it good form too. If the head looks flat, you can just bring a little bit more brightness into this area and that'll make it look 
a little bit more rounder. And same thing with the shoulder. If the shoulder looks a little bit flat, you just add a bit more brightness into this area and through here, pick up a little bit of white and then just kind of bring it into that part that you feel is gonna pop out the most to the viewer. And then you just keep fiddling with it until you feel like you've got it into the, into the realm that you want. And then we're gonna be using this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the base coat for our flowers and any little wild grass and stems that you feel that you'd like to incorporate into your painting. So I'm gonna use my medium brush. I'm gonna be using green, brown, white, and my tan. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put some wild kind of beach grass um, pieces throughout the bottom and maybe a little bit up the right and left of my canvas and then we'll do a base coat for our petals. So I'm going to start with a little bit of green and brown on my brush at the same time. I know I'm going to want some stuff over in this direction or over in this area so I'm just really pulling up the brown and green in what I feel to, to resemble wild grass kind of area. I am alternating the colors at this point. So I started with them both on my brush at the same time. Now I'm just kind of, um, every time I go to pick up paint, one time I'll pick up green, one time I'll pick up brown, and that'll give me a great variety of, um, of these colors. So without washing your brush, it just helps to give you that little bit of diversity as you go through the process. And as you come down and you're along this bottom, try not to just go um, systematic. Put a big piece of grass in one area and then maybe skip skip a little area and then come back and put another piece of grass. So that way it doesn't look too uniform down at the bottom. Just putting these organic kind of sporadic pieces is what will make it look a little bit more natural. And then I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to start putting the base coat of my flowers on. So I want these flowers to look, um, you know, big and bold and they're really close to us so they might even look a little um, a lot closer to us than the bird itself so proportionately they'll be larger than they might be um, if they were to be sitting next to the bird so have fun with however big you want them the bigger they are the closer that they're going to look to the viewer you can even put them around the edges and all that good stuff so I'm going to be using white plus my a little bit of tan on my brush at the same time. So this way I'll get some light areas and some dark areas and that'll give me, when I go to build the colors on the flower, it'll give me some nice dimension to it. So these kind of flowers have um, five petals to them and they're really just kind of loopy round petals that come into into the center of the flower. So I'm going to start in through here. You can have as many as you want. You can have as few as you want. You can have them looking from the side or dead on. I'll show you um, some of them kind of looking from dead on and or front of them and then you can make your own decision how you want to proceed after that. So I'm just going to take these colors and give myself almost like a circle type of a shape. And then I just kind of keep one, two, three, four, and five. And now I'm just gonna pick up some white in order to color in those, um, those petals. And again, you don't necessarily, you don't even really need to use the tan if you don't want to. You could certainly just do a white base on these, but I like using multiple colors and different, playing with the tonal values so I have that dimensional element to them. And I'm going to go sporadically throughout this area so I can build some on top. Like I'll let this dry for a minute and then I'll build another one on top of it. I'm going to do one coming down at the bottom of my canvas in through here. And again, white plus a little bit of tan. This one's just going to have three petals because we're just seeing a portion of it. I'm going to go ahead and do, we'll have a big one coming over in through here. So there's one, two, three. <laughs> You'll learn how to count too if you paint along with me four. And then this one's going to be over on the side. And then I'll just 
um, color them in and whatever color happens happens if yours is lighter or darker than mine if one petal is lighter or darker than the other that's going to be great it's just going to make for a more realistic looking flower when we go to add those details on top of it so now I'm going to go I think I'm going to have one kind of Mm, let's go back over here. I'm going to put one over there in a minute, but I'm going to go over here for now to do one. Maybe we'll do one in three. And you can overlap your tail too if you want to, or any part of your um, bird, whatever works for you there. One, two, but I've got to count. So hold on. <laughs> three. Well, maybe this one, maybe we're just seeing the side of this one. Maybe we're going to miss one over here. Four. We're just going to go with four on this one. Maybe we're seeing this one from the side. And then <laughs> once I've got that, uh, we need another one here. We're going to go for five. There we go, five. <laughs> then I'm going to do, I'll do another one on top of this one. So again, you can overlap them. I'm going to overlap this one here. I'm going to go one, uh, two, three, <laughs> four. <laughs> I'm so sorry I'm counting out all these petals on you. I didn't intend to count them all on you, but I know that this specific flower has five petals, so I just want to make sure that I've got it accurate. <laughs> Over on this right-hand side, I'm going to do um, the side of one. Maybe we're just seeing this one from the side, so we've got one, two, and then we'll have, maybe we'll have one that's just, one of the petals is just kind of flopping over the side like that. There we go. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do maybe a couple of little, um, little buds are coming off of here. So you can have these little fun buds coming off. I think the buds on these are um, a little bit longer and more narrow. I just wanted this one a little bit lighter. Just added a little bit more of the lighter tone to that one. Then I'm going to put um, maybe a couple up in through here. So white plus a tiny bit of my tan. I'm going to have a huge one behind my, um, my bird. So one, two, three. <laughs> and I'm going through wet green. Let it happen. If you've got a wet um, piece of green underneath or something like that, just let it happen. I've lost count now. One, two, three, four. Five. There we go. The green distracted me there. So one, two, three, four, five. There we go. And then again, just color them in. These petals can kind of overlap each other as well. And then I think I'm going to have just a little one maybe kind of coming out from behind this one. So I'm going to put a little bit more tan on my brush so I can see it a little bit. And then maybe I'll have one and we're just going to have the little edges of the petals. So this is a great way to just overlap them if you want to add a little bit more dimension or if you want to strategically hide something like your horizon line, you can have them overlapping. And I think that's as many as I'm going to have, maybe maybe a little bud in through here. And then we're going to use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the details on our flowers. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm going to use are pink, yellow, um, white, and maybe a little bit of brown or black because I want to put a little dark center to the flowers too, but we'll get to that part in a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be rubbing in a yellow um, area in the center of the flower. Then we're going to work on our petals a little bit so we can give them the iconic kind of appearance to these type of flowers and then we'll put a little bit of a center in the middle. So when I do this process um, I I know that these these type of flowers can be different colors. They can be very, very white, or they can be almost like this dark magenta type of color, and any color in between. And some of them have these vibrant yellow centers to them. Some of them don't. So as you go through this process, if you're going about it and you're saying, mm, I'm, I'm not digging the yellow, don't do the yellow. If you like the pink, make it more pink. If you like it more white, make it more white. So feel free to adjust these whatever way that is appealing to your eye. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a little bit of yellow paint on my brush and I'm going to rub it in the center of the flowers and then I'm going to rub it out into each petal a little bit. So I don't need to rub it up too, too far or too much. I'm just going to kind of rub it into that um, the, the petal itself and that's going to give it that iconic kind of look in the middle. So the key is to not use a lot of paint on your brush. If you need to add more, great. 
Um, but if you have too much paint on your brush, your tendency will be to just spread that yellow as far as you can, <laughs> which might be a little bit farther than you had wanted to. And then I'm just going to kind of decide where I want the center to be. And some of them we're only going to see a little tiny piece of it. Some of them will see a lot of it. But again, I have hardly any paint on my brush. I find that center and then I'm just going to rub it into those neighboring petals just a little bit. So not a lot, just a little bit. And of course you could make yours brighter or you know, softer if you wanted to. And again, same thing, just a little bit of yellow on my brush and then just gonna rub it up. And you'll find that if, if you have too much paint on your brush, you'll quickly know that you have too much paint on your brush because you're gonna start rubbing this and it won't dissipate, it won't dry out. Mine kind of dries out on those edges which allows me to give it a little bit of a blended type of a look. And if yours is not doing that, then that means that you probably have too much paint and it's not, um, the quantity is just too heavy and it won't give you that soft edge to it. So again, just tiny bit of yellow paint. And I want this one to be on top of this one. So this one, I'm not even gonna see the center cause it's kind of leaned over. So I'm just gonna put a center on this one and then just rub it out into those neighboring petals. And again, that green is gonna be an, an added bonus to that particular flower. So then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna add some little details to these petals. I'm gonna have mine just um, like a soft pink kind of color, but again, you could make yours into whatever color you'd, you'd like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take pink and white and just make myself a, a soft pink color. You could have yours, you know, lighter or darker, whatever is working for you. So I've got my soft pink color, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start the, um, the look of these, of these petals. So they kind of come out of the center in like a spiral type of a look. So I can take the, like the outside edge of my petal like this and then just curl it in towards that center, curl it in towards the center, curl it in towards the center, and this gives it this little like spiral type of a look. And then you can take your brush. Again, I don't need a lot of paint on my brush and I can rub out that pink color. So something like that is gonna give me, and this you can rub even more into the petal. That'll be however um, pinky you want it to be. So again, just a little bit of that uh, light pink, take it from the edge, curl it into the center of that flower and then just rub it into that petal a little bit and that's gonna give you that, that look. So outside, curl it into the center and you might find like on this one, I find I wanna do this one in front, which might not be the right, the, the technically the right thing to do, but that's the way I'm gonna do it. And then I'm just kind of rubbing that pink into that petal a little bit. And again, gonna go ahead and do these. So from the outside, curl it into the center. And I try and keep the, the curl in the same um, direction. So that way it makes sense. And then wipe my brush off, blend in this pink a little bit. And again, I don't need to blend it in much. We're gonna actually put a little bit of a light highlight on it in a second um, with white paint. So this is just getting me, getting my, my my party started here. So outside, curl it to the inside, curl it, curl it, curl it, curl it, and then just rub it in. And again, when you're doing stuff like this, you'll find, like I always try and give myself a, a system when I'm doing a similar uh, element like these petals. I figure out how that petal is, con or that flower is constructed and then I tell, I give myself a process, you know, I, I gave myself my base coat. I said, okay, then I want to add some colors to it. And how can I build this in a kind of a systematic way? So they make sense and they all have that, that iconic look to them. And then I just build them all in a similar, in a similar way. And that allows me to, to make some of them lighter or brighter or darker. Oops, I'm losing my, I'm losing my spin here. That was on the outside, outside, there we go. <laughs> I lost my spin thought there. Um, and that allows you to 
make, some bigger, some smaller, some from the side. It just allows you, once you understand what that construction of it is, you can have fun with the building process and making them in different sizes and all that good stuff. So now I'm gonna um, just wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna put some white paint on my brush and I'm gonna do that spin in the opposite direction. So I have white and I'm just spinning it in the opposite direction. So, but I'm not gonna cross over the flat, over the, um, the the petal itself so this one's kind of behind it and this is just giving me uh, a nice full layer on on the petal it's allowing me to give it a little bit of a highlight if i want it um it, or to finish making sure those petals are not too see-through so sometimes if you if you're doing this process and you might need a little bit more layers on it than you than you had anticipated so that's where this white right now is coming into play and allowing me to just make sure that I've got a good coverage and and I could adjust the color if I wanted it to be lighter or darker so you can utilize that thought process as well but you can see when I'm getting into these um, little darker ones or that, that have a darker background to them that white is just acting as a nice little highlight around the edges of those petals giving them a little bit of dimension and then this one is sitting in front of that one so again this is just something that will help to to finish those petals we'll do a little bit of a center on them in a minute and if you needed to bring any of the other colors in as well you could certainly do that so you could even put this pink or the white around the pink, you know, just explore however dainty you want these to be or vibrant, it's gonna be up to you. This could be a point where if I wanted to get rid of that green, I certainly could. So if you had some colors on there that were unexpected, you could certainly um, take care of them now as well. And then just get that white to kind of blend in and um, allow it to speak to that, that neighboring pink if you want to. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna work on my centers. So the centers can be dark, they can be light. I'm gonna go for something on the darker side. So I'm gonna take my fluorescent pink and use a little bit of brown with it. So that's gonna give me a nice dark center to it. If you wanted, you could do black, but I'm gonna just do a little bit of brown. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dot that little bit of a center and then just kind of pull it up just a little bit in that spiral. I'm gonna add a little bit of the fluorescent pink in a set in a second, but this just gives me that little deep, dark um, center area. And again, you might not see the whole thing. You don't need a lot of paint. Just an itty bitty bit is gonna give you a great little, um, little bit of information in through there. So just dot it in that center and then just pull it up a little bit into, the, um, into that spiral if you want to. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a little bit in a second, I'll put a little bit of the fluorescent pink on my brush just to give myself a little bit of a more distinct color in the center. I'm thinking that's pretty good and also a little texture in that center. So washing and drying my brush, putting a little bit of fluorescent pink on my brush so I can go back and give myself some little polka dots in the center there and I can also use this up that up that little spiral a little bit so again this will just enhance the the color of that center if you want to not necessary but if you want to enhance that that vibrancy of it just putting this little polka dots of the pink in the center and just pulling it up just a little bit up into that spiral will help to intensify even the full color of the flower. So it just it, it concentrates that color without being too overbearing on the rest of it. Oh, I just picked up a little bit of blue. Hold on a second. We don't want blue in the center of my flowers. <laughs> Quick wash and dry on that one and then reload with some pink. <laughs> and then again, just pulling it up into that little spiral area. I got this last little one here and then you just fiddle with it. Once you've got this on here, you can adjust the, those colors whatever way you want to. And when you've got it in the place that makes your painterly eye happy, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using brown paint and I'm going bottom right on this one. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. It's your painting, you get to sign it however you'd like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very summery, tropical-y image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime. Thank you.